Is something wrong with kit number seven in the mobile crossband repeater project? That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. Well, we got together uh, recently to uh, do some more work on our mobile crossband repeater project. We've uh, made great progress, as uh, you may have seen if you've been watching the videos. And we have got six of the mobile kits uh, complete. And so we were uh, looking to finish up the mobile kits and move on to uh, some antenna work and, and cabling and some things. Uh, when we realized that our spare kit, kit number seven, uh, was actually having a problem. So we got together and uh, we just sort of dove into troubleshooting mode and started taking a look at this kit. Now, one of the things you may notice about this kit as uh, we look, watch this footage is that uh, we have two different kinds of, uh, of radios. Of course, we have the uh, VHF and the UHF. They're both ICOM uh, commercial style radios. But uh, although we had originally purchased a number of the uh, units that had no LCD screen, we've gone back and replaced quite a few of those with models that do have LCD screens. So you can see here the VHF radio has the LCD screen, but the UHF radio is one of the sort of other, other styles that doesn't have a screen. Now they both work perfectly fine and we can have them pre-programmed and everything, but for the purpose of these kits, uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for a club member to work with these kits whenever we're using them in the field, set them up, turn them on, uh, be able to cycle through the programming to find whatever uh, frequencies we're going to be using for that, uh, that particular uh, location. Uh, and so, again, we've, as we can find these units, they're, they're a lot harder to find these days than they used to be, and uh, they've become a lot more expensive. <laughs> So whenever we can find a, a fairly decent deal on, on some of these units with the, the LCDs, we've been buying those and replacing some of the ones that we had that don't have the screen. So this uh, being the spare kit, uh, we weren't that concerned with the fact that the UHF radio didn't have the screen, although we uh, you know are looking to replace that at some point. But then we realized that we actually had a problem with this kit. Uh, it's pretty much done. Everything's there. We've got the case for it and everything, just like all the others. But we realized that the crossband functionality is not working quite right. And so, again, today we were taking a look at that. And so what we did, and you'll kind of see it as we watch the footage, is we tested the radios directly and independently. So we plugged in a microphone to uh, each one of the radios and just did regular, uh, you know, sort of radio use and transmission. And in that fashion... Both the radios are working just fine. So just as a regular radio for 70 centimeters or 2 meters, they're working just fine. The issue is with these radios, as we've shown in previous videos, you have to uh, connect a solder bridge across the solder pad. And then, uh, you know, the pigtails that we've installed into these that you've seen in the videos, uh, you can set them up with a pass-through cable and set up for crossband repeat functionality. Uh, these radios are pretty famous for that. And so that's why we're using them. Well, when we looked at this, the UHF radio that's on the bottom of this kit, uh, the one that doesn't have an LCD screen, when we bought that, uh, when the club president found that and bought it, uh, it had already been modified for some sort of a project, some sort of a use. It already had a pigtail in it. And in fact, we were kind of excited about it because the price wasn't too bad. And it already had the pigtail cable that it looked like, you know, what we used as a, as a pigtail for the crossband. But when we uh, got into this radio, uh, it was a, a nine pin serial type connector, but it was configured differently from what, you know, the ones we use. And the connectors had been soldered directly to the pins that are on the header inside the radio and also a ground had been soldered directly to the shield on the uh, the the chip on the uh, you know, on the motherboard and and we'll see this unit with the uh, the case off here in a minute. So we knew that something different had been done with this radio and and it had some sort of a specialized use. We're not really even sure what it was. 
so that cable wasn't going to do us any good. Um, but the header had been kind of you know, sort of messed up for our uses for regular use. So we uh, created uh, the kind of pigtail that we use and we had put that in there and we thought everything was okay. But as we uh, were doing more troubleshooting here today and we ended up using a couple of handy talkies, um, so we could just easily test from UHF to VHF and then from VHF back to UHF. What we found is that two meters was going through 70 centimeters okay, but the 70 centimeters wasn't going through two meters properly. We had crossband in one direction, but not the other. So uh, we verified we had the problem and then we tested each radio individually. Again, normal radio functionality was fine. We took a, uh, uh, from kit number six, we took the little just pass-through cable and swapped that in to make sure it wasn't something easy <laughs> like that. And of course it wasn't, but we tested that. Well, that was, you know, the conditions was still there. In fact, one of the issues we saw when we set up this unit and, and we're testing it is that the transmit would get locked on. Uh, and I believe that was on the two meter radio, uh, you know, for some reason. Uh, so obviously that's a problem. So again, we were testing all the individual components. And then as you'll see here in a minute, uh, we pulled the 70 centimeter unit out of the little bracket there. And we do, we do end up opening it up and we do some further testing uh, with a couple of uh, breakout box sort of fixtures that, that Don has created over the years. And even tested those pass-through cables just to make sure everything seems fine. Uh, although two different of those cables exhibited the same problem. So we were pretty sure it wasn't the pass-through cable and, and some of the things like that. Um, tested the pigtails. Those cables seem fine. And so again, as we were doing the various testing, uh, we just slowly but surely narrowed it down to the fact that it's, it's the uh, UHF radio. Whatever was done to it, uh, you know, where it had that custom pigtail when we first bought it, uh, you can kind of see here just, just the fact that it's open. Uh, it's got our pigtail in it right now. But this was one that was modified by somebody originally. And we, you know, we don't know if the direct soldering that they did, you know, did they damage something? You know, if, if you solder directly onto, onto motherboards, um, it, it's it's not that hard to, to damage components and not even realize it just because you got a little too much heat into something. And again, the fact that they had soldered directly to that, the heat shield over that one chip. Um, but apparently something got damaged. So again, using these little breakout boxes, we were just verifying all the cables, uh, the pigtails, the pass-through. Uh, again, we tested the base functionality of the radios, uh, which is fine. They're, they're, they're still, each one's still perfectly fine. It's just a radio, a regular radio. Uh, it's just the crossband functionality is damaged in some way on that UHF radio. So, uh, again, using a little uh, beeper there um, just to test continuity in these breakout boxes, we were able to just methodically and slowly go through everything and test and find where the problem was. Because initially, you know, you have no idea. You got two radios and two pigtails and a pass-through cable and, you know, all these things and, and that have been custom made and, and put together. And we just had to do sort of process of elimination. Where's the problem? And it just slowly but surely got to the point where it has to be the UHF radio. Everything else was fine. So um, sort of the good news for our club is that we were really kind of wanting to replace the radio anyway, just because it doesn't have an LCD screen. Uh, we weren't necessarily in a big hurry to do that. We're not in a hurry now either. We've got time until the next race uh, that we typically use these for, but uh, we'll just have to keep an eye out and try to find a relatively good deal on one of these uh, these ICOM radios. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll find one eventually and, and we'll get it in and we'll swap it in there. Um, uh, and we've got several of these radios, the VHF and the UHF radios that don't have screens. Uh, and again, they're perfectly good radios. Uh, even this one still works fine. It's just a normal, regular radio. So here we're just retesting kit number six to make sure we didn't, <laughs> didn't mess anything up by borrowing components from it. Uh, so that's what uh, that's what our, our last work uh, day was about. Our we call them impromptu work days, where we get together just to work on specific things. Um, but we nailed down an issue. Uh, fortunately, it's in the spare component, and it's not going to slow us down too far. But just uh, wanted to show a little bit of that. You know, not everything goes perfectly all the time. 
So that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, this is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We'll see you folks in the next video, 73.